What I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. I've had rainbows in my class. And the thing to do, it seems to me, is to prepare yourself so that you can be a rainbow in somebody else's class. We all really, really love one another. Deep down, we all love one another, and we need to get back to that. Welcome to the Authentically You podcast. I'm Dr. Julie Ducharme, and we're back again talking with some amazing people. So excited to have Jessica Muse here today. Jessica, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Well, as my theme has been going, everything since this COVID-19 has started has been all about everything from tips to talking with people about how they're dealing with COVID, what's going on in their lives. Um, I know it's been a really big transition for a lot of people, myself being an entrepreneur, all my businesses are shut down. Uh, You being a musician, Jessica, I mean, you're dealing with this as well, um, where you had to probably cancel shows, right? Oh, yeah. And if they're if they're not just flat out canceled, they're all rescheduled. And there's been a handful that have been rescheduled multiple times because this dragged out so long. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely see that. And and you're one of a couple of musician friends that I have that is is dealing with that, too. And um, we had to cancel all, all of our conferences, our tour as well. Uh, we still are have one that we were hoping in June might happen, but it looks like it's probably not. Um So I know things just kind of went topsy turvy and, and, and then you throw in, um, for anyone who has kids, you're suddenly homeschooling children. And if you're like me, I am not a homeschooling mother. (laughs) And so that world was like, Oh, hi, let's figure this out. Um, or trying to work from home remotely while you have kids running around in the background. Um, I don't know. Have you seen the zoom things where like someone's like stood up and they didn't have their pants on. They forgot their zoom was you know, not on, I don't know if you've seen those yet. Have you seen those? Um, no, but that's hilarious. You know, I always come to a meeting with pants on. I'm not sure why other people think it like they'll just put a shirt on and no pants on. I don't understand that, but (laughs) no matter what virtual meeting I'm in, I've got pants on. Um, so there's been a lot of that comic relief going on where someone forgot to turn off their camera and people are like, Oh my God, we could see you. Um, so there has been some pretty good, I do have to say, during this whole COVID pandemic, there's been some darn good memes out there. Probably the best I've seen in a while. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Where I just kind of like laugh out loud and go, oh, man, that is really funny. Um, But let's talk about, you know, I know for me, I have ups and downs in this whole thing. You know, one moment I'm like, yes, we're good. We're, We're surviving. We're thriving. Like, you know, bring it on. And then there's some days that I am like, I don't want to get out of bed. I, I just don't even want to deal with life. Like what is going on? Because I feel like my world is really shut down. And so how Mm -hmm. are you dealing with, with this change and, and all of this going on? Well, one good thing is I am with my family, so I'm not like utterly alone, no matter what I do. It's not like me stuck by myself in an apartment. So that I think helps greatly already. But for me, I, I have so much crap to do that it's unreal, and I've just been focusing on using this time as productively as possible and doing all of these things that if I were on the road and I'm traveling and playing all these shows and, you know, just networking, which makes me, like, fly all over the place, I otherwise don't have time to do some of these things. Like, I've really buckled down on my game stream. I'm trying to get Mixer Partner. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with that. And there's also people on there. So it's a virtual community. And I've had human interaction through that. But I've also gotten my NASM certified personal trainer. I just got my cert for that. So, like, I've been doing class. I just finished my semester. I did an astronomy course. And I, honestly, I've had so much to do. I've been running five miles a day. I'm continuing to train. I'm writing an ebook for my CPT stuff. Ooh. And I'm going to start selling plans and like, I'm, I'm pretty freaking busy. So I haven't really had a moment to like, I guess, sit and be lonely or even sad about it because I also am an extroverted introvert and I'm really good at just, if I want to talk to you, we can FaceTime <laughs> <laughs> or I'll, I'll call you or whatever. Cause yeah. even before this whole pandemic, I'm the person who wipes things down with Clorox wipes. Yeah. So 
I'm kind of like made for a pandemic, I guess. <laughs> I'm a survivor, and I just stay in my little hole and play video games and come out when I need to. You know, I'm I'm a Walking Dead fan, so I've been ready for like I was like, bring it on, pandemic! I've got like a thousand rounds. I'm good to go. <laughs> I was like, if everyone just would become a zombie, it'd be a little more fun. But um, <laughs> I'm I'm a big sci-fi person, so we always joke that you know my husband's like, you were made for this. I'm like, I know. I just now we just need zombies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seriously. But, you know, I like that you're proactive because, you know, honestly, I'm sure there's some people sitting around feeling sorry for themselves. I know I've had those days where I'm like, my business of 18 years is shut down. Wow. How in the world could this be happening to me? And then I look at my kids and I go, you know what? I can't behave like this because I have kids and I need to show them that in the face of these mm-hmm. things. We got to just persist. And, um, you know, teaching kids from home and, and still maintaining um, parts of the business and stuff. It, it keeps busy, but I love that. I love that you're taking an astronomy class and that you're like totally getting your certifications. And for those of you listening right now, all the online schools are still going and all the JCs went online and all the state schools went online. So if you're thinking like, Oh, I'd really love to get some professional development, but I can't. Nope. You can. Um, even university of San Diego has some too. So, um, all you got to do is look up those schools, you know, and, and hop in on one of those classes. So, um, but this is awesome. So are there any new projects you're working on that you can tell us about? And I, I've been seeing things on the internet that you've been posting. And so I wasn't sure if you had some fun ones we could chat about. Oh, yeah. So I've been working with a nonprofit called Bethesda, and they work with the adult population that is developmentally disabled because a lot of times that population gets overlooked They help give them jobs, they give them housing, and they also give many of them full-time caretakers. So it's a really, really cool nonprofit that I was lucky enough to get to visit the actual campus and, like, see this with my own eyes late last year before all this craziness. And they've asked me to write a song for them. So I have a single that's going to be coming out later this year, you know, once I can get into a freaking studio and record it. (laughs) And I I already have, like, the game plan, everything. The only thing we don't have is, like, a real release date because we just don't know right now. But that's probably the biggest thing is that new music is coming out. It's music with a purpose. It's music with a cause. So I'm really, really excited for that. Mm, That's very, very cool. And I think, did you debut it? I thought I heard it on one of your, like, live sessions online. Yes. Okay. That was awesome. I love that song. That was it was with the nonprofit. It's a little, it's a deep feeling, make you cry kind of song. Well, I, you know, I got a chance for several girl, years to be a consultant for a company that um, supports and helps um, adults with disabilities. And it, it really was one of my most rewarding jobs. I learned so much because there's so many fallacies about people who are disabled. And, you know, I learned so much that they're just like us, that they have goals and aspirations. They want to go to school. They love to go dancing. You know, they love, you know, Star Wars, just like I love Star Wars. And so it was really neat because I actually gained some really amazing friends out of that. And I really learned a lot about the the disabled community and just what amazing people they are. And, Mm -hmm. um, so just like you, I have a real heart for them and it's, it's great because even after I, um, you know, was done consulting the company, I would run into the people in the community and they would remember me and it was just a lot of fun and, you know, we're friends on Facebook. And so, um, it was really one of the most educational times I had and, you know, I, it really got rid of a lot of stigmas that we have in society, you know, when we see someone who's disabled and how to behave or act around them. Um, So I love that you're working with them because I I just feel like these groups are such wonderful groups and they give such great opportunities um, to our disabled community. The group I worked with, they helped train people so they could go out and get jobs and work. And I Mm -hmm. love that. So that's awesome. Well, I am excited for your new song to come out because that will be very, very cool. Um, So we've been talking about staying busy, you know, keeping ourselves really busy. And I know... For some people right now, they're struggling with anxiety and depression, um, being locked up, not getting to get out like they can, because not everyone has as much room as we do. You know, I know some people are in apartments and, you know, places like Los Angeles and stuff like that, where there's not a lot of places to go. Um, yeah. Here in California, they shut down all the parks. They shut down all the trails. They shut down all the beaches. Uh, literally, you could basically walk around your block. And so... Oh, 
Right. And, I, and I've had a lot of girlfriends who are like, hey, I'm really, my anxiety is super high. My depression is really rough right now. And so, you know, my goal has been to really talk with as many women as I can about what, what do you do when anxiety is high or depression's pushing? What are some things that help you get out of that? Uh, one thing that I've picked up just in the last couple of years, honestly, is meditation. As cheesy as that sounds, there is a free app that I use called Insight Timer. And, you know, there's Headspace, there's Calm, there's so many apps for it. But just doing a little bit of mindfulness every single day has helped me so much mm-hmm. because, like, I have bad anxiety. I used to have to take Xanax. I basically had a closet of antidepressants and Like, I I had a problem, and my hair was falling out. It triggers alopecia areata for me. So, like, I'm coming from a place where, like, I freak out. So if you have anxiety and it manifests physically as, like, hair loss or even just being sick and even mentally just, like, debilitating and, and staying in bed all day, like, seriously, meditation has changed my life. Just, you know, five minutes a day even, and and even right before bed, and that has been such a useful tool on top of exercising because working out releases endorphins, serotonin, and all those happy chemicals in the brain. And, you know, if you're feeling tired, you go for a run. It's funny because sometimes you feel tired because you haven't worked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one reason I've gotten so passionate about like my fitness and I decided to get certified. But that and meditation, honestly, Mm -hmm. I think paired together has just been a perfect little relationship. I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, if, if I go back 10 years and you said meditation to me, I would have laughed and been like, oh, that's such a joke. But after having kids and running companies and speaking and, and where you have constant in your face, you know, you don't have that quiet time to think to yourself. Um, I started yeah. doing like paddle boarding and it was very much like paddleboarding and meditation at the same time. It was quiet. I love paddleboarding. Yeah. It's so hard, but I love it. Well, and it, and, and it really makes you like focus because you're out there yeah. and you, it's quiet and it's beautiful, but you're focusing. And I found that was like this meditation time for me. And when I started to, I didn't used to have anxiety. And over the last so many years, this anxiety has grown in me. And I, I'm sure it's for a variety of reasons. Um, but I learned that I had to start doing things like what, what you're doing, meditation, you know, um, reading, a, reading a book helps me kind of take the focus off myself. Um, and, and I started also just like you're doing, investing back in other groups of people, you know, like focusing on other people and giving back to them. But in those moments when you're at home and you can't go anywhere, you know, over the last eight weeks, I've done a lot of meditation, whether it be just, okay, kids, you guys are going to watch a fun little movie and I'm just going to go sit down for 15 minutes and I'm just going to focus on you know, something else, you know, and especially for many of you women who are listening right now, um, you know, exercise has really been my savior. You know, I, I played obviously high level sports for a long time. And I think that's why I didn't notice depression, anxiety until I really cut down my playing schedule and I wasn't exercising as much. And I started feeling that. And they talk about how athletes, when they transition out of playing high level for a long time, they get hit with depression, and anxiety. And I'm sure like, yeah, when you are doing lots of tours and, and constant on the road, right. And then all of a sudden, like not, they call it kind of that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're addicted to the adrenaline, right. You know, of that going on. And then that quiet time comes and you think, Oh, I've been dying for this quiet time, but why am I feeling so depressed about it? And, um, mm-hmm. so like you, you know, I definitely, when I start feeling those things, anxiety and depression creeping in, I'm like, on my elliptical, going for a walk, riding my bike. They, they'd shut the beaches down for about four weeks here and they shut the waterways down, which I just was like dying. I couldn't go paddle boarding, you know, and I couldn't do kayaking and boating and something I do all the time. I really had to start going like, okay, I'm going to go get on my elliptical. Okay. I'm going to go, you know, for a walk. I'm going to go ride my bike. But I know many of you women have been reaching out to me saying that you guys are having high anxieties through the roof and depression and, you know, what Jess is saying and myself as well, meditation, exercise, um, and talking to someone. Wouldn't you say just, I mean. Yeah. And I actually found a really great resource because I had a full blown panic attack in the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. And 
I kept freaking out with my anxiety about dying and, like, losing people I love because that's kind of where my brain goes when I have panic attacks. And I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't want to upset my parents. I didn't want to, you know, bother my brother. He's a first responder. I worry about him all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. But I found this really great crisis line, and it's called crisis text line. And you just text 741741, and they connect you with a counselor. And it was actually really, really helpful. So if somebody's really freaking out, you know, obviously, if it's a mega emergency, call 911. But just if you're panicking and freaking out like I was, that was a great resource for me. Okay. And and can you repeat that one more time? You said it's crisis text and you text, uh, say the number. Yeah, one. it's it's the crisis text line and you text, I'm on the website right now, it says text home to 741741 and it's anywhere in the U.S. Okay. So it was. It was really great. They they helped talk me down. They're real counselors as far as I know. Mm-hmm. And it was just really nice to have somebody who, you know, it's not your mom, it's not your dad. Yeah. You don't have to worry about upsetting anybody. It's a, it's a third party that's actually trained to deal with that. So it was very helpful. They talked me down out of it. Mm, I, I, I love that. And, and thank you for sharing that. I did have several friends as well who have family members that work. <laughs> Um, in, you know, nursing, doctors, first responders, and it, it was a real fear for them. You know, I, I, a friend of mine was chatting about, you know, what happens if my husband gets exposed, you know, as a doctor, we're not going to see him for two weeks, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so that was a real fear, you know, and then of course, the first responders and the doctors and nurses had a fear of bringing it home to their families. And so I, I get that because, um, you know, there's a lot of people dealing with that. And so I'm so glad you shared that. And we will also put that in the podcast where we put all the links guys. So if you're driving right now and you're like, Oh, I can't remember that. It's going to be in there. Just go back to the link. Um, and we'll definitely put that in. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, so guys, I think that, you know, as Jessica and I are both talking and we're honest, you know, I'm not, I, I, one thing I like about you, Jess, is that you're honest and we're vulnerable about that. We have anxieties, we have depression, like we are not perfect people. You know, I I get that all the time. Like, Oh, you've been so successful. Your life must be perfect. And I'm like, um, no, that's not (laughs) the case at all. Um, but people have this perception when they see someone like yourself, who's been really successful, that life is just perfect for you and you don't have any issues, you know? And, And And you know what? That's exactly why I talk about my problems, because I know that there are a lot of people, there's more attention on me than just like the regular passerby. So I'm aware of that because of just what I've done in my life as far as my musical Mm -hmm. career. So I like to share my story, you know, from anxiety to my alopecia areata to, you know, any ideas I have with fitness and health and mental health. And people appreciate it. They've reached out to me. And that's the reason why, because if, if, If I can help somebody who is currently in their stormy waters and I've already sailed over them, then I will gladly help and share my story because it's to help other people who are in the boat that I used to be in. Mm. Yeah. And and I agree. I mean, for a very long time, I worked very hard to keep a, a, a perfect you know, facade. I, I felt like as a woman who was climbing up the ladder that I couldn't show any weaknesses. I couldn't let anyone see me cry. You know, I couldn't let people know my struggles because then I wouldn't be considered a strong woman, you know, and that, that was very much, it's funny. It was told to me by someone when I was climbing up the success ladder, listen, don't let them see you cry. Don't act like a woman. That's all weakness behave like the guys do. And that was probably the worst advice anyone ever gave me (laughs) because. Yeah. I feel like there's strength in acknowledging your flaws and acknowledging your weak points and low points, because as a human being, there's, if you think you're perfect, then that's something you need to look at. You need to look in the mirror and examine that because there's no such freaking thing. So it's exhausting to try and be perfect. I mean, oh yeah. All you do is wear yourself down because most of the time when you try to be perfect, you're trying to be something that other people want you to be, not what you want to be. Exactly. And I I talk about this in my book. I'm like, God, guys, it's exhausting to, you know, always want to have your house perfect and always look perfect and your children should be perfect. And this is, you know, a lot of times what society expects of you, like, oh, well, that's the, you know, put that perfect thing out on Facebook, you know, and it's so unrealistic. And, and I'm not one to be like a crier, like crying in front of everyone. That's not me. But at the same time, I think that 
we have to be honest. And especially in this time where so many things, you know, like I've fully acknowledged, like, listen, homeschooling has never been my thing. I'm not good at it, but it's my kids and I love them and we're going to do it, you know, but I'm the Mm -hmm. first, I'm the first to say like, Hey, I'm, I may not be the best at this guys, you know, where old Julie would be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I got this. No problem. And I'm like, no people help me, (laughs) you know? So I, I appreciate that because I think as women, when we're able to be vulnerable and honest and, and most times of life, but especially this, we're just, life is just so crazy right now. You know, other women can acknowledge and say, okay, I'm not the only one that feels like this. Um, but let me try something like you guys are trying. Like I said, you know, the younger Julie would have been like, oh, meditation, that's so silly. And now I'm like, yeah, can, how much more meditation can I get in? <laughs> like, <laughs> who's, you know, what can I do? So, um, but anyways, I, I appreciate you talking about that because I think that's so important. So as we come to an end in our podcast, do you have maybe a piece of advice um, you can give everyone for, for anything? Um, It doesn't have to be the coronavirus, but just as people are working to continue to find success in their lives, maybe what's a mantra or something that you like to always share? Well, I always tell people, remember why you started and remember who you are. Take time for yourself and you know, you, you can't be what other people want you to be. And that kind of goes for anything. But I know it especially does for me in music because people are always going to tell you what they think is wrong with you, what you should change, what song you should sing, what clothes you should wear. And as long as you're happy, that's what matters. You don't have to listen to anyone else. You do you. And you just do what you truly feel like is the right thing in your heart. And I think that applies to literally every area of life. And if you do that and you find you're happy, then you will be happy and you don't have to worry about anything. So I guess to wrap it up, I would just say Hakuna Matata. I love that. I love (laughs) that. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for listening. Remember, live, love, laugh, and always be your authentic self.